morning. Can you hear me? Morning, sir. How are you doing? Good and yourself? Good, good. There's going to be some background noises today. They're busy fixing a burst water pipe here in the street. So we've got machines and whatever going up and down here. So I'm not sitting on a building site. I'm actually at home. But they, like they said, they're busy fixing a burst water pipe in the street. Yes, it's a, it's a bit of a mess. And there you will hear some typical construction sounds in the background. Right, under pricing. We're going to start off with Earthworks. And while we wait for the article to join, still, I'm going to see if I can get this, my camera, because I'm going to use my camera to explain to you as well. I'm going to see if I can get this thing to work again today. So let's get this thing going quickly. And you should see my camera now. Some wires and my hand. Can you see that? Can you see my hand? Nothing. This thing up to its old trick again. Right. Now. Can you see my hand? Can you see my hand now? No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you Yes, yes. But walk up. So, so you can see my hand. I see my mouse on a piece of paper. Yes. Right. Yes, sir. Very good. Shall we make progress? All right. Let's have faith in technology as well today because technology has been dropping us badly lately. What looks the best piece of paper? Yes, or this? All right. So here we're in business. All right. On the earthworks. I'm trying to make it lighter on the system. Why is not focusing now? I've got a clear picture clear and the heavy heat comes through now. All right, on Earthworks, you all have, all have got your Earthworks section with you. Have you got, have you got your Earthworks section with you? Yes, sir. Right, so then we're looking at some typical description Excavating pickup material for surface trenches, not exceeding two meter distance site for filling or cart away, uh, exceeding two, not exceeding four. These are your typical um, descriptions, and you guys should be very familiar with them from first year already. Am I correct when I say that? 
Yes, sir. Yes. Right. Now, when it gets more interesting, you must now start wearing your estimator hat. And by wearing your estimator hat, you now actually must take a description and you must turn that into a cost. And that is where it now gets, where you become an estimator. Now, when we look at doing an exca excavation, you measure uh, exploiting pickable material um, and what are uh, uh, not exceeding two meters deep as your, your, your categories. But what must actually happen to the, that trench? A trench must be dug, the sides must be trimmed, and the bottom must be uh, level and ramped. So that means there's my trench. So when the, the guy must dig this and throw, he must throw the soil out, but at the same time, this side here must be trimmed, that side there must be trimmed, and the bottom must be leveled and rammed, so that it must be leveled and compacted. You have a trench. So you must make, in your cost exercise, you must make provision for the guy digging the trench and throwing the material out. You must trim the sides, and you must ram the bottom. But now this leads to an immediate problem. because. When you measure, when you measure as a QS, the volume of the excavations, do you make any, in your description, do you state for a contractor what the size of the trench must be? You just, you just state the cubic volume. So you as the estimator must make an assumption what the size of this must be. Because if you look at this example, and you look at my next example, what will be the difference? My, I've still got the trench, the volume will be the same, but this one is considerably wider, so my bottom will be more and my sides will be less. But as a QS measuring in terms of the standard system, you actually measure the same thing. So this is where you as an estimator must now make an assumption, because when you price, you don't know what that trench will be. You must make an assumption on it. You all happy on this? All happiness on this, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Good. You must talk to me. You must talk to me. Then, other factors to influence the speed of the excavation is the nature of the ground. Is it sand? Is it clay? What's the easiest material to actually dig in? That will be be a wet sand. There's no pick. You just take your spade. That's the easiest to dig in. Clay is hard to dig in. It's much more difficult. Also, is the excavation large or small? If it's large, you can use a machine. If it's small, it, it must be uh, very awkward. I had a project before where we did uh, a ground beams on the raft foundations. And my ground beams were something like 180 millimeters wide. Now, that is narrower than a standard spade. So what we did there is we actually would take and buy new spades, take an angle grinder and just cut them to the size. So, but that dug very difficult. So you must look at uh, the, 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 the depth of the excavation, the method of the excavation is by hand or by machine. The weather, the weather conditions, extremely cold, extremely hot. Also remember, in South Africa, we're relatively lucky. We don't really get frozen ground. The only place here in, in Southern Africa where I've seen frozen ground, it will be in uh, Lesotho. There you get it in winter time. But in large parts of Europe, North America, Canada, all those areas, you actually have, uh, uh, have the ground freeze for a large part of the year. And then ordinary soil becomes like uh, concrete. And the last one is going to still going to cause you a lot of headaches in your life is bulking of soil. Now, what is meant by bulking of soil? What's the easiest way to actually understand bulking of soil? When you were little, you were smaller, but you go to the beach and play on the beach. You would dig a hole in the ground in, in wet sand and you put the sand on the, next to it. Will you be able to put all that material back into that hole again?
Any suggestions? No. Why not? You could act. Why not? Why won't you? Won't you be able to put it back? Because when you take out the soil, even for excavation, when you take out the soil, it multiplies. It multiplies. That is, sorry, yes, yes, it, it multiplies. So that means. In layman's terms, it multiplies. More technical term, we refer to it as bulking. So that means yeah. if I if I dig a hole of one meter by one meter by one meter, what's the volume of the material that comes out of that hole? If I dig a hole one meter by one meter by one meter, what's the volume of the material that comes out of that hole? It'll be one cubic meter. You agree with that? Now, if I, if I order a very special truck that's only, that only got a load body of one cubic meter on, will I be able to get all my material on that truck that I dug out of my out of my hole? If I dig one cubic meter hole, will I get that material on a one cubic meter truck to cart away? If I will have more material. My material will be about 1.2 to 1.5 cubic meters, depending on the on the type of soil. And this becomes important when we measure, you as a QS measure the excavation, you measure it net based on the dimensions. The contractor must be aware of that but the soil is going to bulk. If carting away must happen, you also be aware that he's going to work with soil that's bulked, so that means the soil became more. Now, the opposite is also true. If you as a QS measure an excavation that must be filled, you measure net. When the contractor buys material in for that filling, he must actually buy more material because he must make provision for the bulking. Because when he buys a material, you normally buy material per cubic meter per truckload, that's bulk material. You put that material in the excavation and you compact it, you reduce the material to unbulk volume, and therefore the contractor will make provision that he must actually buy in more material. Bulking is also going to give you a headache when we do concrete and mortars. So, bulking, keep it in mind, it's still going to give you quite a few headaches along the line. Any other questions here? Can we move on? Right. Now, when we look at the labor constants. And when we, 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 we price a trench, we must look at, when we price an excavation, we must first assume the size of a trench because if you wear your QS hat, if you're wearing your QS hat, you don't supply a size of the actual excavation. So in this case, we assume a trench to be 20 meters long. And how deep is my trench here? My trench is 700 wide, 0.7 wide, and my trench is one meter deep. You agree with that? You see my my my, my artwork here. My trench is 20 meters long, one meter deep, and 700 wide. So that means for dig and throw out, what will my dimensions be? 20, 20 meters long, the trench is 700 wide, and it's one meter deep. You agree with me? So that means 
my total volume of material will be 14 cubic meters. You agree with that? Yes, sir. You agree with that? Yes, sir. Right. So, I am telling you now, now I must calculate a labor constant. Now, a labor constant, labor constant, can you see my, my camera still? Can you see my camera here? Where I'm writing on a piece of paper. Can you see it? Can you I can't hear. Yeah. Okay. okay, I can see now. Thank you. You can see it. You zoom in a bit more, but then I get, then I get less area on it. Right, on my labor constant, how do we calculate the labor constant? Total time divided by. Divided by total production. Now I'm telling you here to dig this excavation. It took 42 hours to dig this. This was just observed time on it. So that is what's my total time in this example. 42 hours, I'm giving you that. What was my production? 14 cubic meters. So that means my labor constant equals three hours per cubic meter. So that means if I put one person digging after three hours, that person should have excavated an, uh, one cubic meter. Alternatively, if I put three people on the job, after one hour, they should have excavated that cubic meter because three, three persons are giving one hour each, so my labor component remains exactly the same. Are you happy with, the, with, uh, with this step? Happiness, talk to me. Can you hear me? Are you there? Can you hear me? Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, now we're looking at trim sides. Now the trimming of the sides, it took, it took the, the, the time it took was 3.2 hours. Trim sides based on our excavation. Now, what was the area of the trimming of the sides? What was the area of that? It's 20 meters long. 20 meters long. It is one meter deep, and we've got two sides. So that means we did 40 square meters in area. You happy with that? So again, production figure. Total time, total production, production. What was my total time? 3.2 hours. Total production was 40 meters square. And that will give me 0.08 hours per square meter. You concur on that. Um, 
maybe I am bringing you back uh, with the total time. Are we given the total time? Yes, I will give you the total time, how long it takes. And I'll give it okay. to you. Okay. Thank so you. I'll tell you how long, how long uh, I can give you the total time. I can tell you five people worked for six hours on it or one person worked for 20 hours on it. It depends on the member. The five people worked on it for six hours. So that means five people gave six hours each. So five times six is 50 hours is your total labor hours in that component. Oh. And you must just be very careful of that. It would be very oh. clear a distinction between time on a clock and labor and labor time. Okay. Sorry, yes. So when we calculate, so when we calculate labor content, uh, we include all the laborers. You include all the laborers, but when we start getting in elements like uh, brickwork and plastering, where you have artisans and laborers, there you, you take your artisan's time as the, for the production, and your labor is based on that. But when we do something like digging trenches, we, we, we only will have general laborers digging the trenches. So there you include everybody, but don't take that as a rule. When we get, like I said, when we get into brickwork and plastering and carpentry, where we've got artisans and laborers working together, then, it, it, then, we, we, then, then, then there's a split on that. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Right. Right. Now we're getting to ram bottoms. And my uh, my time for ramming bottom, my observed time, was seven hours. That's my little quarter time. Now what's the area of my, my bottoms? That is 20, uh, 20 meters by 700. And that will be four. square. Now we go back to total time over total production. Total time will be 7 hours over 14 square meters and that gives me 0.5 hours per meter square. You happy with that? All happy with that. You see that pin up a bit, yeah. Yes, sir. All see it. But what's the immediate problem that we've got here? What's the immediate problem we see here? How did we measure our excavations? Per cubic meter. How did we? How are we measuring our trimming sides and ramming bottoms? Square meters. So uh, there we've got a problem. Now, how do we overcome the problem that we actually have in that case? Hello, am I back? Hello? Yes, sir. I'm still here, I'm sir. I'm still here because this thing keeps on dropping me again. Back to its old nonsense. Alright, so how do we overcome this problem that we have? How do we overcome this problem? Can you see my camera still? You can still see my camera here. You see my paper. So how do we overcome this problem now? You can throw out. And this is per 
cubic meter equals 3.0 hours. You happy with that? You happy with that? Yes, now. On the trim sides, what was the labor constant that we calculated for the trim sides? 0 0.08 hours per square meter. What was the area of the sides that we had to trim in this excavation? That was 40 square meter. And what was the volume of excavated material we got out out of this 14 cubic meters? So therefore, the time for my trim size, where's the brain here quickly? Is 0.23 hours. You agree with that? You concur with that answer of mine? Yes. You're still busy working out. You're all happy on the trim side answer I get that we got. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. All right. Then on the ram bottoms, what did, I, what did we get there? We got a labor constant of 0.5 hours. And what's the area of the, the ramming of the bottoms? 14 meters square. And what was the area of our excavation? 14 cubic meters. And that gives me. 0.5 hours per cubic meter. Also, this 14 day and that 14 day is purely coincidental. There's no correlation between those two because this is square meters and this is cubic meters. This is purely coincidental in the example we took. So therefore, my time to excavate, to this excavation, will be 3.73 hours per cubic meter. It will take me, I'm take my labor at 3.73 hours to excavate, to dig the trench and throw the material out, to trim the sides and the ram and level the bottom. It will take 3.73 hours per cubic meter. But what must you keep in mind about this 3.73 hours? This was only applicable to my trench that's got a size of, uh, of 20 meters long by 700 wide by 1 meter deep. It's only applicable to this situation. If I have different dimensions here, my ratios will change. So therefore, my area of my sides will change, my volume will change, and the area of my bottom will change. And that will result in a slightly different ratio here. And at the end of the day, it will actually influence my answer at the end. So when you're sitting in the QS office, oh, sorry, the contractor's office, you must be pricing a ball, then you must make an assumption of what the trench will be. And you base your calculation on that. If you are, um, if you're in a test or the exam, I want to guide you towards the same answer. So for that reason, I will tell you, Assume a trench 20, 25, 50 meters long by this deep, by this wide to actually guide you towards an answer. All happiness on this. I hear nothing. Can I assume you're all happy? I'm assuming you're all happy if I don't hear complaints. So then if we go back to our notes, we are looking at, uh, look at our labor constants already. 
then there's some labor constants. Now, for a labor constants, you obtain the labor constants from free sources. Either it will be a labor constants that I will give you, and you must learn them, or alternatively, I will give you the information to actually calculate the labor constants. Now, here's a couple of labor constants. When we finish with this, you literally know hundreds and hundreds of labor constants. Now, load, load, wheel into, load onto wheelbarrows is one hour per cubic meter. So if you've got filling material that somebody must load, get loaded into a wheelbarrow, it's one hour per cubic meter. Wheel and deposit, to push that wheelbarrow and, and offload the material, half an hour labor constant. Spread. Who is asking a question here? Right. Who's got an open mic? Getting some feedback here on this. Can you hear me? Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Good. Right. Then we get spread and level is another uh, 0.5 hours. Consolidate means compacting the material, one hour per cube. Return fill and ram, one hour per cube. And watering, 0.05 hours per square meter. And keep note that's per square meter square meter that you must uh, allow for that then filling of hardcore material if you uh, must bring in material you can measure hardcore either in layers or you can measure it per cubic meters and the important part that I'm going to bring in here is if we are measuring something per cubic meter that means we've got a block of one meter by one meter by one meter by one meter. You agree? Now, if we start using it in this case, in 150 layers, that means you actually slice it off in layers. That's 150 millimeters thick. And 150 millimeters thick. So that, so the, the thicker your slices be, the less square meters you'll get out of a, a cubic meter. The thinner your slices, the more square meters you get out of a cubic meter. The best way to illustrate this is if you take a loaf of bread and you start unpacking it. There's your cubic meter, this is your half loaf of bread. Now you start unpacking the slices. Then you, get, you spread the area. But if you, the thicker your slices will be, the less area you will actually get out of this. Happiness. Right, now let's look at the risk of collapse. Risk of collapse is where we protect the sides and guard against them falling in. Now, as a contractor, you can price risk of collapse in various methods. The first one is you, the relatively stable soil, in which is not too deep, you don't support the sides. And if a bit of soil falls in, you clean it out. Or you can have planking and strutting in very loose, unstable soil or in deep excavation to pre prevent the excavation from material from falling in. You as the contractor must decide what uh, what extent you want to allow for risk of collapse. And this is based on the type of site you're working on, how deep the excavations will be, also tied in with... Uh, uh, the time the excavations must be open, must you send people down into the excavation, what must happen in the excavation, all of that will influence your decision. Now we're getting to bulking. And bulking is, as I spoke briefly just now, bulking is when we look at an, the material, we dig a hole, and the volume of the hole is measured as a QS 10 cubic meters, you're not going to be able to load that material onto a 10 cubic meter tip truck. 
because material bulk. Now the factor of bulking depends on the type of material. Sand's about 10 to 20 percent depending on the coarseness of the sand and then it moves up when you start breaking rock. Rock material very often doubles when it, because there's a lot of voids. If, you, if you, you take a solid piece of rock, there's absolutely no voids. If you start breaking that piece of rock, you're getting a lot of voids in between that and it's not uncommon for rock material to actually double in volume. Again, a risk of, uh, for bulking, I will give you your bulking factors that you should allow for in your examples and in your uh, calculations. Now, here's another example of uh, an excavation that you can work through this. Again, if you just look at this for a quick note, in that I've got three laborers working in on this excavation and each laborer works eight and a half hours. So a working day in this case is eight and a half hours. If I don't give you any information on the length of a working day, the working day is eight hours. So in this case it is eight eight and a half hours. Work through this uh, through this example and then you get back to me with any questions. So the only way to get around these and start feeling comfortable with them is actually by start doing them yourself. I will also recommend that here we're giving you some alternatives. Look at what works the easiest for you. I prefer this method, but look at alternatives, look at what's, what's working for you. If it's uh, but I prefer this method. I'll later on, some of you will get very cross with me in pricing because I will start showing you various alternative measures, methods on how to actually do the work or, or resolve a calculation. But for time, I prefer this method. It's a much easier method to actually work with. Then another example of excavate in pickable material. Where we, where we giving, I'm giving you your, info, your labor constants. There's your preliminary calculations. And then we actually calculate the unit rate. In this example, my general labor or general employee earns 27 rand and 50 cents for this. And let's look at our last one for bulking quickly. Backfilling and trenches and holes with material available from excavations. Now, for this, we have got our, we've got our, when you measure as a QS, you measure it in cubic meters. Now, my labor constant for backfilling is one hour. So there I allow my person one hour of backfilling, but my bulking factor is 50%. So that means my guy is busy backfilling there. To, to fill a hole of one cubic meter, he must actually move 1.3 cubic meters of material. So therefore, I allow 50% on that, my bulking factor, because there is given as 50%. And so he, 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 for one hour, it's allowable is one hour, and then I'm giving him 50% on top of that. So his labor rate is 2750 for an hour, it's another 0.3 hours, or 50%, it's 820. And uh, 25 cents. So my allowable for this will be 35 rand and 75 cents. Then I add my overheads, I add my profit, and I actually had to arrive at the rate that I'm going to put in my bill of quantities, exceeding, uh, excluding VAT. Happiness. Talk to me, somebody. Are you here? Are you there? Hello? Talk to me. Are you there? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Are you following me? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you'll just, just talk at the moment. I can't hear. Come again. 
Ähm, aber wenn wir die so wird nachgetan, wenn man so kann sie. Ja, das finde ich sickling at the moment. I'm still waiting for my other car. It, 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 I promise me it will be here today. Because I'm sitting on the fiber line here and the fiber works like absolute... I'm not allowed to swear, but it, of course we are being recorded, but it's not working very good. So... We are battling a bit. I think let, let's stop here, then we have another session tomorrow morning. So we can make where I must start. Now, what you, um, you just run through the excavation, run through the backfilling example for me, to actually get the feel of what we're actually busy with. And then tomorrow, I'm going to schedule us another session for tomorrow morning. You all happy with that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. Uh, any other questions on, on pricing so far? Yes, sir. Uh, last time you gave us three exercises and uh, you promised to give us uh, the memo for those exercises. When I yes. checked on Moodle, I couldn't find any memo. Um, <laughs> so it's it, some sort of reminding you, sir. Okay, just uh, we really fun and cool. Okay, but go and look. I've loaded all the, the, the memos for everything on Moodle. Are you talking about those brick exercises? The last three exercises? Yes, I've, I've loaded That's all of them. Do me a favor. Oh, just go and check. If you can't find it, get back to me. Uh, somebody else, just help us with the... Uh, did you lo uh, I've loaded all the, the, the answers for you on Moodle, didn't I? You did, sir. Did I? All right. Then, uh, any other questions for pricing? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Um, on right. exercise six. Yeah. You say, yeah, you calculated payer, but I don't understand. Why did you say payer? What did I on say in exercise six? six? All right, let me get yes. there quickly. Give me a sec, yeah? And I hope this thing is not crashing with us again here. Yeah. Let me get, get on to Moodle here quickly. I didn't want to open Moodle this morning because I uh, tried to have the least possible interferences here. Okay, well, okay. On, on, on what uh, question are you talking about? Wait, exercise? Um, exercise? Exercise 6, sir. Exercise 6? Yes, sir. What was the question? You said you going and did the calculations. You said pair. You calculated them pair. I just don't understand. Why did you say pair? Oh, come again. I better to hear you. Uh, um, when you did the calculations, you said pair. So I don't understand. Why did you say pair? What did I say? Where? Um, you said pair. You calculated them um, pair. So I don't understand. Why did you say pair? Because we usually say hours and kilometers. And you stay there at the top. You must calculate uh, pair, um, hours for kilometers. But this time you said pair. And you didn't say anything about years at the top. Okay, is that a question on the concrete mixers? Yes, yes. All right, see, the question said uh, you need the one mixer for six months and the other mixer for 18 months or something like that. Yes. So the, there now I must determine what is the uh, what's the easiest way to get so, so therefore the easier to resolve is actually going to calculate an annually or a yearly cost for my mixer. Because uh, from a yearly cost, I can get it per month, and then I can take that to six months or 12 months or nine months, how long I ever acquired the mixer. So that is where, remember on 
in estimating, you're not going to be given everything. You must start applying your knowledge to it as well. And here's a typical example when now you must now start applying and use common sense. What do I want? I want the cost of this machine per year or for six months. What, how should I calculate it? To calculate it per year, it will be the easiest method to arrive at my answer. So this is where the, the common sense comes in as well. Okay. You must start thinking on your feet here. Okay, so I, I right. understand. Um, and right. another question is, on your, on your uh, um, examples, when you give us um, a purchasing price, for an example, and then you say including bed, when we calculate, must we exclude that bed? How do we always price? How do we always price? Excluding that. Excluding that. So that, yes, there you answered yes. your own question. You must always exclude that. And that will always be at the current rate. The current rate of that is 15%. So, so then you must, must take all 15% that on, on that piece of machinery, on that, uh, that brick, that cement, whatever, wherever you pay that on. Okay, sir. Thank you. Take it that answering your question? Yes, sir. All right. Any other questions? Yes, sir. About the test, uh, when are we receiving our test? Your test? Sorry. I haven't... Are you talking our about... Mark. That first test, I haven't done it yet because they can't go to my marker and I'm very, very busy to keep all, all these uh, slides and stuff up and going, but I will get to it. Because I'm busy reinventing the wheel here for all my subjects. And it's, it's difficult that it's difficult. I can't send it to my, my, my marking assistant. I can't send it to, to him either. But I will get to it. Any other questions? Any other questions? On, let me talk quickly about DCT as well. I've loaded some more slides for you last night or afternoon. Did you see it? On the DCT side, most of you are taking DCT as well. Did you see, did you see I loaded some more slides for DCT as well? Can you hear me? Hello, sir. Yes, can you, this thing is getting worse and worse. It's getting very bad now. I said for DCT, I loaded some more slides. You see, you see them? Uh, How are you busy coping with your workload at the moment? I've got a lot of work, little work. A lot of work, so. uh, but let's talk about the city. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, you yeah. gave us a quiz. I gave you a quiz. Yeah, a practice uh, quiz. Yes. Yes, a practice quiz. Uh, uh -huh. I personally have a problem because I answered. I, I it's just that I can't remember at the which question, but I think it was question three or question four, where mm -hmm. I know that I've got that answer right, but, when, but I was marked wrong for it. That's exactly why we actually have a, 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 a practice run. It was, it was twofold. The practice run was for you to practice, but also for me to see how the, the computer actually interprets the questions and how it interprets the answers. So, but so that but that is not counting that that's a practice run. That's not counting marks towards your mark. That is purely a practice run for both of us to see how this thing works, for you to familiarize yourself with it, for me to see how the how the machine interprets questions, how it marks questions, where it got it wrong. There's another question 
that if she also got wrong as a matter of interest. And so that's exactly why why you have practice runs to actually get out of the system as well. Because I was I was I was very worried. Uh, yeah. Because what if did I rob you? Did, did, I, did I rob you? Yes, I got wrong answers. Sorry, I you robbed you. Wrong. I, I robbed yes, you. you mm -hmm. No, that's it. That's exactly why we have practice runs. Find bugs like like these in the system. That's exactly why we have practice runs. Okay, okay. Right. I, I'm 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 busy working on proper tests and assignments for us as well. I will let you know shortly on on them. Any other questions? If there's no question, this line is getting very bad now. I will uh, I will set up as another appointment for us for an uh, for a, a pricing lecture tomorrow morning to go on with this work. You all happy with that? Yes, sir. Yes, and please communicate with me questions. Ask questions, please. I can't see your faces at the moment. All right, before this thing. I'm going to say goodbye, stay healthy, stay safe, because this thing is just busy going again here. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, bye. 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 bye.